Good morning, Great Force, and good afternoon to those who have been to break. Welcome to our NST lesson, and today's topic is change of state of matter. Do you remember what matter is? Matter is everything that has mass and takes up space by having volume. Do you remember the three states of matter? Solid, liquid, and gas. Do you remember that particles in a solid state are packed and cannot move, and that solids usually have a defined shape, a specific shape? Let's talk about liquids. Do you remember that particles in liquid state are able to move around. Partic um, part um, liquids are flowy, so that means they don't have a defined shape. They take the shape of whatever container. And do you remember gases? Gases have no defined shape, and some gases are quite difficult to see. And particles and gases move freely around each other. Do you think the state of matter could change? Do you think that liquids could change to solids? Or gases could change to liquids? Or gases could change to solid. Let's find out. Solid could change to liquid. When solids are heated, they can change into liquids. For example, this is a block of butter, two cubes of butter. Now, heat energy was added onto the pan, and now the butter is melting. The process which solid changes to liquid is called melting. The second example is a picture of the ice cream. Ice cream is a solid. However, as soon as it is exposed to um, heat energy from the sun, it melts, it slips through our hands. And if it slips through our hands, just like water does, then that means it has turned into liquid from solid. And our third picture is a picture of ice cubes. They are obviously removed from the freezer and they're now exposed to heat. And that's why they are turning into water. Remember, the process which solid changes to liquid is called melting. Can liquid change to gas? Of course it can. When liquids are heated enough, they can change into gas. We have a picture of a kettle over there, there's water inside the kettle, and the kettle is boiling. And as the kettle is boiling, there you can see the steam coming out, and this steam is an example of gas. That means the water inside the kettle is evaporating. The process which liquid turns to gas is called evaporating. And if you sit here and observe the kettle evaporates, eventually all the water in the kettle will disappear. I've got another example here, which is quite unusual that we never pay attention to. When you wash your socks and hang them on the liner, stay close and observe them. Because they are wet and now they're drying, if you observe them carefully, you will see steam leaving your pair of socks or shirt or whatever item that you have washed. On a 
hot summer day, when mom or auntie goes to the liner to hang the clothes, just stay close and observe all the clothes. You'll see steam leaving the clothes. And there's another example of water boiling. If you observe this water boiling, eventually it'll all disappear because it is all turning into gas. Remember that the process which liquid change to gas is called evaporating. Can gas change to liquid? Of course it can. When gas cools, it loses heat and becomes liquids again. Now, if you check this picture over here, this is a kettle on fire, okay? What's happening is that the water inside the kettle is boiling and the steam coming out the kettle. If you put a lid closer to the steam, steam is an example of gas. If you put the lid closer to the steam, and observe very closely, all the steam will hit the, le the lid of the whatever pot that you have. And if you observe closely for a couple of seconds, all that steam will now start dropping. And that's when the gas, this gas, is turning into liquid. Another example of gas turning into liquid is when we are inside the car on a winter day driving to school, we breathe out air. Okay, the air that we breathe, we breathe, is um, an example of gas. And if you actually exhale, if you exhale on the window and step back for a little while and observe, your um, air will now start dropping down in droplets on the window of the car and that is an example of gas turning into liquid and the process which gas turns into liquid is called condensing can liquid turn to solid of course it can when liquids lose heat they are cooled and can change into solids summer days when we take uh, a fruit juice and we put put it in these containers and shove it in the fridge later when we take it out the freezer we don't have the liquid juice anymore but we now have ice fruit lollies i love ice lollies um, another example of liquid turning into solid is that you would take your tap water okay and place it in the ice cube tray shove it in the freezer after a couple of hours you can check all the water that you pour in this tray would have changed into solid which is ice the butter which we heated if we remove it from the stove and put it on the side or shove it in the fridge it will change again and turns into solid the process which liquid changed to solid is called solidifying. Can gas change to solid? Or can solids change to gas? I wonder. Let's find out. This is a summary diagram of change of state of matter. Gases can change into liquid and the process is called condensation. Liquid can change into gases and the process is called evaporate, evaporation. Sorry. Liquid can change into solid and the process is called freezing. And solid can change into liquid and the process is called melting. Now, our two questions were, can solid change to gas? Yes, it can. And the process is called sublimation. And the gas can change into solid. And the process is called deposition. 
You don't have to worry about these two processes in grade 4 though. But I thought I should just inform you that it is possible for solid to change to gas and for gas to change to solid. Activity 1. Change of state of matter. Use these words to complete the sentences below. I've given you two, four, six words and I've given you four statements and you only need five of these words to complete these statements. You may use color to write your answers. Please don't forget to underline your correct answer. And there is an extra word which I have included on our word bank just to challenge you a little bit. So if there is an extra word at the end of your activity, you don't have to worry about it. It is there to just confuse you a little bit. Okay. And to challenge you, most importantly. Homework will be in your Platinum NST textbook. And it is due on the 18th of August, which is next Tuesday when you return to school. You will be focusing on page 59, activity 3. And the heading is Observe Evaporation and Condensation. Please focus on question 5A to B. You may read all the instructions and if you have an adult at home, you can carry out these investigations. Um, but if you are aware, question one to four are instructions and information. In your books, I will find only answers to question five A to B. Uh, the next activity for your homework is activity four and the heading is investigate evaporation, condensing, freezing, and a melting using water and ice. Again, I repeat, if there is an adult at home who can help you carry out the investigation, it would be great, okay? But if you read through, the instructions are quite clear. And with all the information that I have given you today, you will be able to um, answer question 7A, B, C, and D without doing the investigation, okay? And please don't forget to underline correct answers in color or using pencil, okay? Or you can use color to write your correct answers. That's it from me, Great Force. Thank you for sticking around. And remember, be kind, be respectful, and stay safe.